Hi everyone, this is an Ask Augustine video. Uh, it's been a while since the last one. Today I'm going to answer the question, uh, how do you play cleanly? Something I've actually gotten um, a number of times over the last few weeks uh, or months. And there isn't such a simple short answer to it because what we mean with clean violin playing, there's actually many components to that. First of all, of course, there's intonation. If something is clean, it usually means that it is in tune, so that's something to work on. There's also the sound quality, that uh, sometimes a really clean violin playing also is, uh, it does also mean that it's played with a good sound, which has a lot to do with uh, not hearing too much bow noise and having like the, the right ratio of bow pressure and bow speed and the position of the bow, these, all these factors that actually I would add to that also, the angling of the bow, that that's that that's the right that you have used the right angling for the circumstance. Uh, these like factors are always in relation to each other. So uh, you, uh, if you want to uh, increase the pressure, sometimes you also have to increase the bow speed along with it, so you don't choke the sound. Um, or um, what's another example? If you're playing playing a lot of chords, you probably want to be more uh, playing with full hair. Like paying attention to these kinds of sound production questions contributes to a cleaner sound. And then there is what happens between the notes and this is um, I think just as important as the notes themselves and it's an aspect that's often a bit overlooked. It has a lot to do with how you listen to yourself to really be aware of the kinds of sounds and noises that happen as you switch from one note to another. For example, a very common example is that there are shifts, maybe, that you don't actually intend to be heard, but that are there. Especially during substitutions, if you're going... That we could might hear... That we might hear shifting noises like that. Uh, so that even if the notes themselves are actually in tune, um, uh, those shifts, I'm horribly exaggerating now, but those shifts create a kind of distortion of the sound. I mean, you, you're almost adding extra pitches that shouldn't be there, and it's just, it just takes away from the from the cleanliness. So paying a lot of attention to what happens between the notes, that these are clean changes, which means uh, which means moving your fingers fast enough and accurately enough that that. Um, you have less shifting and also maybe compensating with the bow that sometimes there's no other way but to actually slightly lift the bow or just slightly um, just stop the bow during that split second when you make the shift um, and that increases the cleanliness. But the first step is actually hearing it and it's easy to not notice these noises because our ears only hear what we are expecting to hear and what we want to hear and sometimes we have to listen to each other very very critically it can help actually to record ourselves and this can be kind of it can be kind of tough at the, um, when you first start doing it because you are going to hear a lot of things that you don't like but it is the first step at getting to getting closer to the sound that you ultimately want. So being quite self-aware during practice and hearing those details is um, essential. Something else that can happen as you transition from one note to another is that um, if you're playing a bunch of notes under a slur, if your left hand is not moving clearly enough, decisively enough, I mean you don't want to be tense with it, but you want the fingers to come down firmly and suddenly enough um, that you're not going to get a, a, a kind of like a, like a mushiness. And uh, on the way down, the way you can practice that is actually by slightly doing like a pizzicato, by plucking like this. And then you reduce it. But to some extent, it can actually be a part of it and it makes it can make scales. Um, a little bit, a little bit clearer, particularly um, when your instrument doesn't actually speak so clearly. The condition of your instrument is a factor in this because sometimes if the scoop of the fingerboard is no longer good, then it con it makes it sound mushier. So there's some sometimes it's also time to bring your instrument to a loose ear. But the way that you move your left hand has a lot to do with 
clean playing under a slur. Finally, another thing that happens between notes uh, when they're separate has to do with the coordination between right and left. And of course, this coordination is it's everything. It's so important so that something like this could start on can sound not not clean anymore because you're not exactly uh, switching at the right time. The key is actually you want to you want to move your fingers, your left hand, just slightly before your right hand. It's not actually at the same time because if you, because the the um, the new note has to be there by the time you play it. Um, so, and I think this is something that makes the timing counterintuitive on the violin is that actually the left hand comes down slightly earlier. I've become very aware of that as I've been uh, uh, working on videos and sometimes have to synchronize the sound to videos and I realize I always have to synchronize to the right hand, not to the left hand because sometimes actually the fingers come down quite a bit before the note is played. Uh, so this is something that really became clear to me uh, over the last few months. Hope that's helpful and I'll see you next time.